Hi, everybody, wherever you may be. My name is Larry. Welcome to the North America Radio Guide channel. It's truly a pleasure you're here. Thank you. It's my honor to be able to spend some time with you right now. I'd like to invite you to please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. The bell icon especially is important. I shoot all of my videos live. So my career in broadcasting kind of goes with that. I just like to get it done without having to edit stuff and show you just part of what we're doing. I'd like you to see exactly what we're doing live. So catch up with me live when we do a radio review or we're doing something on the rig. If you've got a license and you've got a ham radio, it would be my honor and pleasure to have a QSO with you. So please hit the subscribe bell icon. Today we're going to be talking about the MFJ 1888 MC. This is the enhanced receiving loop antenna with four port multi-coupler. Now that sounds like a mouthful, right? Okay. Don't worry about it. Not so bad. Only moving part right there. It's the power button. On the back, you have five SO239 connectors. The one connects to your antenna, and then the others connect to your radios. They're shielded, they're protected, and it does not degrade the signal coming in whatsoever. It's an amazing product. It really is. Let me try and show you real quick something that I struggle with here at my home. And it's because simply the way things are. I have an MFJ 1886 receive only loop. It's important. Never transmit into either this product or this loop here that you see in the picture at the top right. That's the MFJ 1886 receive only. So it's literally receiving things north and south, technically in this direction, because that's the way that the ends of the loop are pointed. In the middle of the loop, precisely at the middle, there's a narrow null. It's a way that you can cancel out RFI. All that radio frequency interference somewhere. Maybe your neighbor's got a plasma that's still live. It's, poss it's possible. It's possible. <laughs> okay? Or maybe they've got something that's just causing you grief, right? You can tune it that way. You can turn that antenna to null out the noise, okay? My problem is in the lower left. You'll see a green electrical box there. Now, if it wasn't there, I'd have no power. But because it is there, I have power, which I'm grateful for, but I'm not happy about all the RFI the Dargon thing puts out because it's crazy. That's why the loop's pointed that direction. It simply nulls out the noise there. So it helps tremendously. It's a fantastic thing. So you should be using the loop receive antenna. Did you know that? Coming from the shortwave DX side for over 47 years now, both listening to AM and shortwave DX, we focus on antennas. That's what we do. We focus on the best antenna and the best radio we can find to listen because that's the fun of it all, right? Well, when you get to ham radio, it's like a different culture there. They think about antennas with DBI and how well it can bump up their gain to transmit. But remember, there's two parts to every QSO, the transmit and the receive. If you have the transmit nailed down, most hams figure, well, that's as good as it gets for getting receive. Wrong. Totally wrong. Coming from being a shortwave listener for so long, I can tell you the advantage of a loop antenna would astound you. It really would. Watch a loop antenna review on YouTube. No matter what the host says, do me this favor. Look at the field below the signals, okay? Where the waterfall travels down. That's the field, the receive field. Wherever the band is, wherever they're at, showing the bandwidth of what the receiver's picking up. Once they click over to a loop, you're going to see something. You're going to see whatever color they have to fill in that field so you can watch the waterfalls go down, right? You're going to see that field all of a sudden go to black or go to a real light color. That represents less RFI. That's what it means. That means the signal is stronger automatically. It brings a signal up because the noise goes away. That's why loop antennas are so important. Now, if you have a vertical, 
we know that a vertical will transmit omnidirectional, it means it receives the same way, right? It's like dropping a pebble in a pond. You watch the ripples go. It transmit, receive the same way at a vertical. On a dipole, we know that the transmission signal typically goes broadside of the antenna. Same with the receive. Receive will be the exact same way. So that's how it works. Now, when you have a loop, you can not only tune the loop to a certain area you'd like to work, but you can also tune to null any source of RFI. Most hams don't even think about it. It's just, it's like the hidden secret of ham radio. You can up your QSO count and make your current QSO sound so much better if you simply invested a few hundred dollars to buy a receive loop antenna. That's the truth. They make that much of a difference. Now, in the case of the 1888 multi-coupler, what I did was I hooked it up to my 1886 receive only. Again, don't transmit into this. You will destroy it. So on the antenna port, it went right to my 1886 receive only loop. Then on antenna port number one, receive port number one, I should say, that went to my Yaesu 101 MP. And that was important to me because I wanted to go directly to the first rig where I could watch the waterfall on the screen. That was important. Number two went to a dear friend, Dale, who's also a ham, who lent me his barely, I don't think it's ever been used, really, Kenwood TS-2000. Neat radio. I like it a lot. That went into the Receive 2 port. Receive 3 port was used with a special coupler that went from the SO239 connector down to an eighth inch jack. So it would go into an antenna input on a Texan PL880. By the way, this little guy right here, this is the PL880. This is one heck of a radio. The signal that comes out of this thing is great. Good signal. It's got good sensitivity, decent selectivity, but the sound, oh, it's beautiful. This this does not sound like a small radio. It really doesn't. It sounds like a big radio because of the sound. Also, the tuning knob and the volume knob are very weighted. It has a good quality to it. So this was hooked up to receiver number three. This is a tree. I'm really excited to show this to you. This is receiver number four. Look at it. Fits in the palm of your hand. It's It's smaller. Well, basically, I guess maybe it's about the same size as your wallet. I mean, compare it to a computer mouse. Here's computer mouse. There's the whole radio, the whole receiver. The receiver is much smaller than a computer mouse. It's great. This guy is an oldie but a goodie. It's, it's not in production anymore. Getting kind of rare now, but it's really a neat radio. This is the Sony... ICF SW100. It has very decent sound considering it's in a shell that small. And the reason the shell is that, that big actually is to accommodate the magnet and the speaker. That's really the only reason. Otherwise, it'd probably be thinner. But it has very close selectivity and sensitivity to the legendary Sony 2010. That's one of the best shortwave. DX receivers ever made, ever. And the 100 is so close in reception, selectivity, that you would be blown away. You would. It's so close to the, to the 2010. It's unbelievable. I don't know how they did this. This is just terrific to me. Anyway, this was on the Receive 4 port via a special coupler that went SO239 down to a little quarter inch, little eighth inch jack, I mean. Anyway, when I used them, what I did was each radio I put on at different times. I started first with the Yesu. That was on receiver one. So it gave me the waterfall on the screen, okay? I was able to get a reference point from there once I turned on the Kenwood TS-2000. No drop. The waterfall was perfectly consistent, and the reception on both radios was phenomenal. On the Kenwood, I couldn't hear the signals. About probably 70% of the signals the loop picked up, the Kenwood couldn't hear on my 
AV680 high gain vertical antenna. And it couldn't hear as well on my ZS6 BKW dipole, which is an inverted V at 48 feet up. It couldn't hear them. But on the loop, it did. Then I moved to the PL880 by Texan. It did better than the Kenwood, believe it or not. But, but this is made specifically for reception, where the Kenwood is made to do not only HF, but VHF, UHF. So it's like a shack in the box. It's kind of like the Yezu 991A right now. Very similar. No degradation in signal when this came on. And the signals that the radio heard were much clearer and much louder. That's what the loop does, okay? The loop will bring the signals up and bring the noise floor down. Watch any YouTube video. You'll see. The eyes don't lie. That field where all that noise is, you see the waterfalls tracking down. Once they click, once they click to a loop, you'll see that color either change to a light, light color or it'll disappear completely because the loop takes out the atmospheric and environmental noise. It won't take out all of it, but it takes out a lot of it, enough that it's noticeable clearly on a waterfall. So even if they tell you on the YouTube video, ah, it's the same as my vertical or it's the same as my dipole, no, no, and no, it doesn't. A loop antenna will hear better than your vertical or your dipole. It just does. It's supposed to. So when you think about ham radio, please remember, there are two elements you need to remember. Transmit and the effect of your gear to transmit. Receive the ability for your radio to hear those signals. Shouldn't you have an optimal receive antenna? No one ever thinks of that. You don't go into a store and say, hey, how well does that vertical hear? No, nobody does that. <laughs> they don't. But coming from the short wave side for so, over 45 years before I became a ham, I can tell you I had that experience coming in, so I knew the importance of the receive side. And I'll tell you, you're missing tons of QSO Tons of QSOs because you don't have a receive loop to hear them with. It just brings the world alive. Try it. A few hundred dollars, a few hundred bucks, and you'll be convinced it's the way to go. That's it. The MFJ 1888 MC, four point multi coupler, hook up four rigs or four receivers with one loop antenna. Don't need to buy a loop for each one of your rigs. This one does it all. And before you say, I could just do it without with this AB switch, you know, switch it out. A four point switch, no. Even if you hook the bias T portion of the loop antenna to the input of that four point switch, that four point switch even though it will take that signal and move it each time it clicks to the next receiver, here's the problem. Not only do you introduce one more element into the receive chain that can degrade the signal, but you also now have four inputs into a switch. That switch still will take some of that power away your signal will be degraded over that of what using this instead will do. You put this in place of a four point switch to try and switch between your radios. Not only do you gotta remember which radio is which, which is kind of silly, but this does it all by itself and it's shielded from the RF in the back. Each one of those SO239s has its own shielded port. So. It's really the way to go. If you've got your rigs and most hams, they don't get rid of them. They buy like the ASU 101, but they don't get rid of their Kenwood 590 SG or they buy a flex, but they won't get rid of that ICOM 7610. Put the receive loop on both of them. If you don't have a directional antenna, if you don't have a directional antenna, none of this applies because the directional antenna 
will not only bring up the gain in the direction it's pointed at, but also brings up the gain and receive. So it works fantastic. It does a phenomenal job. But for a lot of us who have verticals or who have dipoles, space restricted as well, HOAs, you can use the loop and you can have a multitude of radios and it works just great. It just does. Try it. You will be surprised at how the world comes alive with a loop, okay? Thank you guys for watching. God bless you. I hope you have a good day. I truly do. Next time, we'll come back with another video. Today, we tackled both ham and we covered shortwave listeners because this applies to both. It will help you both out. We'll see you next time on the North America Radio Guide channel. Until then, my name's Larry. My call signs Kilo 7 Hotel November. God bless you, everybody. Take care and goodbye.